Hypothetically, what would happen if America found itself in a conflict against the entire rest of the world? Bring would the it, country bitch. still have the power to achieve victory, or would it be worn down and defeated? The world 20v wants us, even if we lose, the world's fucked. Like, there's no way that the world could ever recover economically. I feel like we are mad petty, and we'll be like, oh, you want to take us down? Bomb them all, fuck it. For the purpose of this video, we'll exclude nuclear weapons and assume that such a conflict would break out after a period of heightened global tensions rather than as a surprise attack. The biggest challenges to the US in terms of actual military capability would certainly be China. Western European nations would be a close second as they are wealthy and have stockpiles of advanced Dog weapons shit. and technology. No one cares about France's While fucking Russia, once military. considered to be America's main military challenger, its invasion of Ukraine has made clear that the country is something of a paper tiger, especially if its nuclear stockpile is out of the equation, surrounded by water on two sides, and Mexico and Canada to the north and south. Any physical attack against the US would face major challenges. It would mean mounting either an enormous amphibious assault from one of the coasts, or attempting to invade via land. But the deserts in the southwest and the Great Lakes in the Midwest insulate the country's major Damn, population centers from a potential invasion I never thought about our geography from Canada being goaded and like Mexico. That. An invasion from outside North America would require massive fronts and long supply chains. If every foreign power managed to coordinate such a massive operation and do so while remaining undetected, under the enormous reach and power of the American intelligence apparatus, it would still have issues building up a force of any significant size. Hey guys, real quick, if I'm not mistaken, we have the largest navy like 10 times over. Can anybody verify? Can anybody confirm that our navy is fucking goaded? Like our navy is like eight times stronger than the next closest one. If it's 20v1 the world, navy veteran here, appreciate your service. I go above for those that have gone beyond working at USAA prior. If you bang with navy fed, fuck you. USA, bitch. If it's 20v1, right, we're immediately taking over fucking Mexico and Canada just as just as collateral damage just to set up our, our defense situation. Like, sorry, Canada. What are y'all going to do about it? Not a goddamn thing. We protect you on the daily. Same thing for Mexico. You're just the United States beard. Mexico got the United States looking like Jafar from Aladdin. The strategic Hawaiian island chain acts as a gateway to I the US right, mainland Slip. for attacks from the Pacific and is protected by a significant military presence. Hey, Similarly, y'all got one off us. Uh, y'all got one off. We'll get, you did your big one in Pearl Harbor, but we were that's, that'll never happen again. An attack from Mexico would probably be more feasible due to the Great Lakes blocking much of the Canadian border. But California and Texas have the largest concentration of defense industries and military bases in the country. The United States is a natural economic hub and military fortress. Fuck it's yeah, packed we are. with resources and has more economic arteries like navigable waterways and ports than the rest of the world Mississippi, combined. Bitch. And even if the US military was unable to stop an invasion, the huge diversity of terrain would also provide US military personnel or militias with the ability to conduct guerrilla warfare. Let's not also forget that there's more guns than there are people in the United States. You could agree or disagree that we have that right, but in this situation, that's literally why that right exists. Is it ever gonna play out? No. Did he say it's impossible? No. Terrain would also provide US military personnel or militias I got one white with hair the ability to conduct guerrilla warfare. 34, the US by the way. <laughs> is also by far the most heavily armed civilian population in the world with I'm goaded as fuck. I might have subconsciously knew we were going there just because this guy in the fucking, in the hoodie. The US is also by far the most heavily armed civilian population in the world, as with we a staggering 120 guns for every 100 people. This means Didn't that even if that a coalition many. of other countries was able to actually get troops into the US, it would end up facing an incredibly well-armed and pissed-off insurgency. The US has developed a worldwide infrastructure of military bases, supply lines, and the world's largest air and naval transport fleets. This contains hundreds of ships and aircraft, more than the entire fleet of most countries. <laughs> the lack of global mobility would be an enormous issue for any coalition facing the US. One of the first battlefields in any conflict between the US and the rest of the world would be the Middle East. Yeah, Here, one on major oil. aim of the DoD, as carried out by US Central Command, would be to secure critical US oil refineries and distribution centers, as well as gain control of the sea lanes used for transporting oil out of the region. Bro. 
As oil of 2022, 80.4% of the world's oil reserves are located in countries belonging to the international oil cartel OPEC and 60... I didn't realize that it was 80% of all oil is in the Middle East. No wonder these motherfuckers got money the way that they do. Holy shit! Over 60% of the world's oil passes through shipping lanes in the Arabian Sea alone. Choke points. While the US has reduced its presence in the region in recent years, possessing the world's 12th largest oil reserves means that the US could theoretically go self-sufficient in wartime. But Shee control of some Middle Eastern reserves would make guaranteeing its supply much easier. It would allow the US to deny oil to much of the rest of the world and undermine the coalition's economies and military <laughs> production. Europe, which would represent the US's most significant adversary, receives a significant amount of its crude oil and natural gas from the Middle East. This means that US military control of the region would harm Europe's ability to sustain a war effort for any extended period of time. China would face a similar issue. We would basically say, hey, let's cut off each other's oil supply and see who lasts the longest. That is crazy, bro. See, y'all see it as a military industrial complex, right? Like that's what that's what outsiders and people outside the even even insiders in the United States like Democrats, like they think that we spend too much on military spending. But I think it's just like worst case scenario spending. It might be out of control, but are we going to be mad about the trillion dollars that we didn't spend over the last five years if it, the fucking world decides to attack us? Are, are we paranoid? At the start of the conflict, the US would first strike at oil-related facilities across the Middle East, using um, carrier-based strike aircraft plus medium and long-range ballistic missiles. While regional powers could offer some resistance, none of them have anywhere close to the manpower or firepower needed to stop the US in an all-out war. We'd be like, shut While up! Israel, Saudi Flying Arabia, the UAE, and several others do have modern fighter jets and other weaponry, even they would not last very long up against the might of the DoD. Unlike Russia's recent experience in Ukraine, the US has actually proven that it can effectively destroy another nation's air defense network, as it did during Desert Storm in the 1990s. Today, the this 90s, might be even bro. easier due to the enormous ago. arsenal of drones the US has access to. Most US losses in the air would likely come from such drones, <laughs> as well as- Hey, yo, imagine annihilating an entire fucking city on Xbox controller. Caught in real life. A second major battlefield would be the Pacific, where the US would probably use its fleet to keep China and other East Asian this nations is where we contained right with the Navy. and stop them from attacking the West Coast. As of this video, there are 47 aircraft carriers around the world. The largest 11 of these are all nuclear-powered carriers belonging <sighs> to the US, which have more than twice the combined total deck space of every other country combined. The Pacific Fleet we have 11 of the 47 carriers, and those 11 combined deck space has more deck space than the rest of the world combined. Bro, our Navy goes fucking so hard in the paint. What the fuck? Oil would be another top concern, and the US could use its massive Navy to gain control of the Strait of Malacca, which carries up to 40% of the world's trade every year. A US blockade of this waterway would also devastate most economies in Asia giving the US serious economic leverage over China, India, and others. Another potential target is Taiwan, where over 90% of the world's advanced microchips are currently fabricated. The 90%? US might even need to seize and try to occupy the island to stop the global coalition from dominating the production of modern electronics. To Bro, if we stop oil and we take over Taiwan, the world's fucked. Is that what I'm hearing right now? The naval base on Guam would be especially vulnerable to strikes by ballistic missiles which could overwhelm its limited air defenses. Yeah, Guan, Even so, Guan's the US small. Navy is so powerful that every country in the East Pacific combined would be occupied with fending it off. And because the US Navy is larger than those of the next eight countries combined, that shit it is could a crazy easily video. fight in two or three theaters at once, making simultaneous blockades of Europe, the Middle East, and Asia Pacific a real possibility. Another aspect of a global war would involve submarines, Haven't even talked which about unsurprisingly subject. the US has more of than almost anyone else. Its fleet contains 53 fast attack submarines, 14 nuclear-capable ballistic missile subs, and 4 guided missile subs. So we got 14 subs across the, in, across the ocean right now that are just ready to launch nukes at the turn of a key? A third global area of battle would be the Americas. Because Mexico, Canada, and other Here countries in the region are far less powerful, there is a good chance the US could blockade, 
control or destroy the majority of their military and economic resources. Bro, I feel like if it came down to it, we would give them the ultimatum. We'd be like, hey, do you want to get taken over or are you just going to fucking join us in this fight? I, in Mexico, I get it. If you don't, we built the wall. That's our bad. But hey, you know, it is what it is. But Canada, you know you don't want to go down like this. If you can't beat them, join them type shit. Keep in mind that as of 2022, US military spending was $877 billion, constituting 40% of the global total and more than the next 10 countries combined. Hey, yo, that's quite a large number for one year. What the fuck? 40% of the world's military spending was done by the United States. God, I know why motherfuckers don't like us. I would hate us too. Today, this enormous sum still only accounts for about 3% of the country's GDP. In a global war, this percentage would almost certainly increase and could rise to similar levels as World War II, when US military spending accounted for over 40% of national GDP. Okay, so if we do the math, what would 40% look like? 10 to 15 trillion dollars? Y'all think we spend a lot on military now? <laughs> 10 trillion? Per year? Another crucial domain in a global conflict with the US would play out in cyberspace. I don't know what you just said, uh, the Vans guru, guru, but America, bitch, type shit. US cyber spending will rise to more than $25 billion, <sighs> and the country continues to top every ranking Not of the Razor national mouse. cyber power. Bro was blowing up some village in the middle of nowhere using a gaming mouse, not even a wireless one. He had a wired Razor mouse controlling a drone, blowing up a family of 20 and all their goats. The US would work to starve the world's other major powers of oil, war supplies, and other vital resources. In the end, the victor would almost certainly be whichever side could outlast the other. While the scenario of America versus the entire Lucky, world this was is obviously an absurd one, it does give us a useful picture of just how powerful the US military really is. And all of the speculation above excludes the most powerful part of the equation, nuclear weapons. It's worth noting that the US has over 1,400 <laughs> actively deployed nukes, and in any real global conflict, they could be used to give any non-nuclear country a very permanent end. And even in a very distant hypothetical like the one above, we should remember that the cost of human life in any worldwide conflict would be staggering, and that even winners in such a war would suffer. Oh man, uh, we're the shit. They said, hey, the, the war is gonna only be won two ways, either by the amount of firepower you have or the amount of money that you have. And we said, why not both? It almost makes it worth it to not even have free healthcare.